When it comes to the Bible, there is a command that is given within the second epistle Paul had written to Timothy that is only preserved in the King James Bible. Let's read the passage. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now the new versions change the command to study to do your best, and changes the scripture to rightly handling instead of rightly dividing, being specific instructions on how to deal with scripture. This verse is best exemplified in the hermeneutical application of what is known as dispensationalism. Dispensationalism is essentially that the Bible is divided in moments of time where God has given through revelation his plan of salvation to the world and his method of operation within said time. Now most evangelical and theological liberals may roll their eyes and say, oh, you're a dispensationalist. But if they're honest, they'll come to realize that they themselves must hold to some level of dispensational practice, as they are not expected to go to the temple of Jerusalem and sacrifice in the temple because Jesus Christ had made that final and complete atonement for sin for all time, which was not always there and now is. The divide between the Old Testament and the New Testament is clear to almost any practicing Christian, but this is not the only time that God has showed distinction in his mode of operation. Let's take the time to examine seven dispensations within the Bible briefly. Starts from creation, and with Adam and Eve living in the Garden of Eden in peace, to the disobedience of God's command not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which culminates in their expulsion from the Garden. Taking effect after Adam and Eve's expulsion, this time is marked by man's evil, as seen at first through the murder of Abel from his brother Cain, which continues through their later generations until God destroys the world with water, only sparing Noah, his family, and the creatures of the world in the ark. After the flood, the descendants of Noah turn to their own achievements instead of the will of God, which is in full display with the construction of the Tower of Babel, where God confounds their languages causing them to scatter, while simultaneously ending that dispensation. This takes place after Babel and is where God reveals himself to Abraham and his descendants establishing his everlasting covenants with them and their seed and the land that is promised to them. This ends at the exodus of the Hebrews from Egypt. After Moses leads the Israelites out of Egypt, the Mosaic law is established which God required of the Jewish people in all facets of life, including the ceremonial atonement for sin which ended at the appearance of Jesus Christ, his crucifixion, and the day of Pentecost. Our current dispensation that had started on the day of Pentecost, where the gospel of Christ's atonement of sin is preached throughout the world till the second coming of Christ, which ends with the catching up of the bride of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble also known as the Great Tribulation. While the term Dispensation of Grace is used to describe the Church Age, grace has always been a factor in how God has dealt with people, with the exception that now a person is saved by grace through faith. 
happens after the seven years of suffering, which redeems the nation of Israel and restores the world for the reign of Christ as king for 1,000 years. This comes to an end after the last attempted rebellion of Satan with Gog and Magog, where after the world ends with fire, eternity begins in New Jerusalem for all the saints. This marks the ending of our brief examination of dispensationalism. Further examination includes books and passages within the Bible that are allotted to these specific times, with greater or lesser emphasis placed depending on the doctrine being expressed. In closing, it is important to remember 2 Timothy 3.16 where it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible is meant for us to learn from and to follow after the examples given, while making sure to know what is applicable for us according to God's appointed times.